When you're ready to begin imaging, obviously when you turn it on, it does have a live image and you're ready to go. The first thing you really need to do is enter your patient information. So we're going to start up here with the patient information key. Here it enters an automatic patient ID that refers to the date uh, and the number, the what patient it is of the day. So that's going to assign a unique patient ID to that patient. And you can come here and type in the name. I'll just put in a name of test right now. And then whatever parameters you want to enter here, you can go ahead and add them. If you just want to do a quick scan, you can just plug in a quick name and do that. Up here, we have archive and work list. We'll get to that later. The work list refers to DICOM, and the archive is also what this button does, which goes to previous patients or the current patient's information. Along here, we have some tabs, depending on what exam you're going to do this this will this will be what goes on the report whether it's small parts pediatric vascular whatever information you need to do that is pertinent to that patient you'll want to enter on that screen and then you go ahead and click OK after you do that but if you're in a current patient and you want a new patient like if there's information already there you will just go ahead and click new patient and in the future if you are pulling up a previous patient from the archive or patient list, you'll just say you want a new study under this new patient's exam. And of course, when you're done, you can also click end patient and the OK button. So we'll click OK and get started here. This little yellow box that appears tells me what uh, my TGC positions are over here. And it appears briefly, and there's some settings you can do to make that appear or not. So that just goes ahead and disappears after about three seconds. And the next thing we'll want to do is select our probe and the imaging preset. So these imaging presets will, are designed to optimize the image for whatever it is that that specialty is and it will also assign things like your annotation library, body marker library, and calculations to whatever it is that you're doing so you don't have to go through a library and select it each time. So we'll go ahead and just choose uh, anything. We'll just uh, pick MSK and you're ready to scan. Now, like we said, down below we have a frequency and all these things that, that are adjusted down here. But when most people get started, they want to know where the freeze key is. So when you get your image and you're going, there's your freeze key. It goes immediately to Cine Review, and you can scroll back through there. This is also where you would save your clip. Now, here we have our save keys. We have single save, and this right here is a film strip. Saving, it's going to save an entire loop. So this loop right here, so this little snowflake means we're frozen. This is 213 of 256. That is the frame I am on. It's saying I have 256 frames stored in memory. I can scroll back and forth through that. And if I like that image, I can hit save. And it saves that single image and comes along down here. If I want to review that image, I'm going to click the arrow, scroll over to it, hit enter, and it will pull up that image. It says one of one, and that's that image viewing. And now I can just hit freeze and go back to a live image. And then if I want to save a clip, I'll hit freeze and it will save that cine loop clip. And after that, when you go to the archive and push this button down here, it will show all those active images and here's where you can go to your report and we will get to that in a later video. So down along the bottom, when I unfreeze, we have our image optimization controls. We already went over the frequency. Here's where you change your dynamic range. Eye image is something that is made by Chison that is designed to try and optimize the image based on what it's looking at using things like just general gain controls. Here we have our compound imaging and speckle reduction, which you can turn on and off. In this preset, it has compound on, it's on compound imaging on and speckle reduction off. And you can change that by turning compound off first. I'm going to push down to turn on the SRA, and then I can push up and get compound on. So now I have speckle reduction and compound imaging off. In order to turn the speckle reduction off, I have to first turn off the compound, then turn off the speckle reduction, and now I can turn compound back on. In the revision that you're looking at, it, that may have changed. This is something that, um, that might be changed in a future version. And, of course, we have our pulse wave Doppler over here. We also discussed other menus. So if we push down this menu button here, we can adjust our focal zones, our scan width, persistence, and some of these will increase frame rates or, or improve overall image quality. Persistence, which is also known as frame averaging, line density, the smoothness, the edge enhancement, the acoustic power. And you can also twist this and scroll down to advanced, zoom coefficient, 
MB, which is a multi-beam, which you'll want to leave on whatever the default is. That is also another imaging optimization. It's not like compound imaging. It uses more of a different technology to try and improve overall image resolution. You have your trapezoidal mode, your biopsy. When you scroll down, you can flip on your biopsy. And then it's saying, before you do anything, make sure that you have that biopsy in the right position before you go ahead and do anything. And here you have your line for the biopsy. You can turn that off. And then if you want a center line, turn that on and off as well. Up here we have our gain control. Now, if you've used other ultrasound machines, oh, I'm sorry, I've got this menu up. This is where I'll hit exit and make it disappear. The gain control is up here. If you've used to other ultrasounds, the gain is here or here usually. In this case, it's up here. Uh, maybe it will change someday, but just note that that's the gain control. And your depth control is here. You'll see the depth be adjusted down here, and it will also show your depth up there on the image. If I want to change my focal position, I'm going to click down, and focus will be highlighted. And so now I can look at my focal zones. And I can adjust my focal positions. And when we want to change the focal number, we clicked on that menu, and I'll go up here, push down and adjust the parameter, and then I can click exit. So what I did there, I press down, I scroll, I push down again to select it, and I adjust that parameter, and then hit exit. Another thing about the gain button is you can go to a full screen mode. It's kind of a hidden uh, little gem here, but if you want to go to full screen mode, push down the gain key and you go to a full screen uh, so you can get a little bit better image if you don't want all the other stuff cluttering up your image. Go ahead and click gain again to get out of that full screen. I believe exit also works for that too. Over here we have angle and zoom. The angle is not going to do you anything in just general 2D, but it will do it in things in other modes. To do zoom, you're going to click down and highlight the zoom, and here's your zoom box. And you can increase or decrease by twisting that and move it using the trackball. Click again, and here it's going to show exactly where you're zoomed in. And again, you can increase or decrease that zoom. And then exit to exit zoom mode and go back to your regular 2D imaging. Some things also over here, we have tissue harmonics imaging. This is an image optimization tool that you would normally use on a convex or other probe, but I would recommend trying to turn it on or off to see if you like it in any imaging mode that you're in, just by pushing down. You'll see that it's up here, it indicates the tissue harmonics is on or off. But for higher resolution at certain frequencies, you may find the THI works. You'll often lose penetration, well, pretty much always lose penetration when you turn on tissue harmonics at the expense of resolution. AIO is automatic image optimization. Similar to iImage, iImage has different settings uh, for contrast and gain. Automatic image optimization will look at the entire screen and try and adjust how the gain looks and try and make the image best. In many, many cases on most ultrasound machines, it's not always the greatest button. Uh, it sounds nice, but uh, some people love it, other people don't. We have our swap here. We can flip the image. So if you're scanning, it'll flip from left to right or up down. So you can flip it upside down, which you might choose that in a gynecological application. Flip it up and down or left to right, depending on how you want to view that image. We have our M mode here, which we'll get into the next movie, but we have our 4B mode. This is push down and it goes to our quad screen. Every time we want to get a new image, we'll press it again, and we have our four images. Let me get some gel on that probe. So now I've got some gel on the probe, and you can see it a little bit better. As I hit 4B, you'll see a new image appear. It'll freeze that image and give me a new image each time freeze to freeze them all and you can take your measurements which we'll get into a later movie you can save and it'll go down on the clipboard if you want to go back to the single screen just freeze hit the B and you'll go back to the full full screen mode a little bit better view there okay and we briefly discussed the cine review here if we freeze the image we can scroll back through now when you hit save for that whole loop it's gonna save all 256 frames you may not want all of that 
So in some cases, you may not want to save that whole clip for hard drive space so you don't have to export a large clip over to DICOM or you just want to see a certain portion and not all 256 frames. You could save just a portion by using this Enter key. Scroll the trackball to the frame that you like, hit Enter, and you'll see that it deletes part of it, and then you can select the frames you want by hitting Enter again. Then you would save that clip, and it's just going to save that little portion that we showed right there. And if I hit play pause, it's only going to play through that little bit of a clip. And that's all that's going to be saved onto the hard drive. I'll hit pause. And then if I just hit update, it'll show me the whole cine loop again, and I can do the same thing again. Enter, enter, save that clip, and move on. Next, we'll get into Doppler and M-Mode imaging.